Hi, and welcome back to another tutorial in the GrainMA3 tutorial series for beginners. This time it's about sequences or GrainMA3 sequences. What is a sequence? You can think of a sequence as a container of queues. In a sequence, you can have multiple queues. You can have only one queue, but basically this is where queues live. The reason why you have sequences is that you can record queues in a sequence. And when you do that, it's going to appear here on sequence number one or number two or whichever one you're working at. The cool thing is you can move them around afterwards. So it, depending on where you want to use it, you can, uh, you can move it, you can assign it to a fader, you can assign it to a button. That doesn't matter. As long as you have it in your sequence pool, it's safe and you can use it wherever. So let's start uh, by building our first sequence. What you do is you turn on basically some of your moving lights or some of your dimmers. In this case, we're doing it with our vipers. We put them in a position. We give them a color. We maybe give them magenta, it's easy to see. And then we can zoom them in if we want to and store this in a sequence number one. Right now we stored one queue in one sequence. A good thing when you work on lighting in general is to label everything. So let's just label this one to our master queue list. There we go. So now we have our master queue list. Our master queue list has only one queue in it. But if we need to record any more queues, we need to have a different view because we can't see what we're doing right now. We need to change it around just a little bit. This is a great view. We built it on episode, I think it was episode number two or episode number three in this tutorial series. We need to change it up li a little bit just to be sure that we can work with it, that we can see what we're doing. So let's start by deleting the 3D window just for a second. We delete the, the beam directory over here. We don't really use it anyway. We uh, put our focus down here and then we move all our colors down in the bottom, maybe we rescale the sequence sheet just a little bit here, or the sequence pool, sequence pool, sorry. Then we open up our 3D window again. We scale it all the way down like this, and we move it to the side right here. You can see this little lock up here. That's because we need to change the camera to the front camera. We need to zoom in just a little bit so we can see what's going on. And up here, we need to open the playbacks or the playback. The playback is a representation of the first 10 faders on your console. So if you store something right here, for instance, that's the first fader. It's a little bit big right now. We have the first 10 faders. We only need the first five so we can see what we're doing. So we go into sections here, repress it once, or you can right click it and see how many sections do you want to see at the same time. We close this one down and then we have our first five faders. We can rescale it like this so we can see what's happening and then we can open our uh, sequence sheet down here this is our queue list or our sequence sheet and we stored a queue before and we have the queue right here with our information in it so we we have our sequence the sequence is living in the sequence pool right here we can't really work with it because it's not assigned to anything so if we want to assign it, we press Alt plus A for the assign. If you have the shortcuts activated over here, we press the master queue list and we assign it to 201. This is the first fader on the console. That gives us a go button right here. So now we can go our queue list the way we want to. Let's make some sort of change. We have our queue now and uh, we need to record some other stuff. Let's say we take all our vipers again and move them to a different position. Let's move them to our roof position like this. We need to once again store it and we store it on our master queue list. And now it asks us a few questions. Do you want to override the queue you're in? Do you want to merge it into the queue? Do you want to remove some values? Do you want to release it? Or do you want to create a second queue? In this case, we want to create a second queue because we are building a queue list uh, that contains more than one queue. So the first time you try to store into a uh, sequence that has only one queue in it, it's going to ask you if you want to create a second queue. If we say yes, it creates queue number two. But the next time we try to store into the same queue list, it's not going to ask us. It's just automatically going to assume that you want an extra queue. So next time it's going to automatically uh, create queue number three. 
So let's uh, clear out here. We uh, move the, the moving lights into a new position. When we clear out, it goes back to what it was doing before because we're still in queue number one. But if I press the go button up here, it's going to do what we just asked it to do because we are now in queue number two. If we press go again, it goes back to queue number one. And we say, okay, we can just try it again. Say it's very fast when it goes into queue number one but maybe it's a little too fast. So I can say down here on our fade time, if I right click here and I say, I wanted to do it in five seconds, please, it changed to five seconds. Then if I go back to queue number one, like we have here, and then now I go into queue number two, we just set a fade time of five seconds. We press go and the change is now gonna be five seconds, which is really cool. Now we can go back to queue number one and say, okay, are we done with queue number one? Do we need to add something to it? I think we need to add all our auras in position number two, maybe. We need to have them in open white. We need to have a narrow beam and we need to turn them on like this. Maybe we need to take them in the roof position. Yeah, there we go. So to store this in queue number one, we just press store and we push this one, queue number one, and it's going to ask you, do you want to merge? Do you want to remove, release, or override? I think I would like to merge it into queue number one, so I select that one. If I clear out now, queue number one now consists of our vipers as we did before, and now our auras as well. If I press the go button, it's going to do the change for the vipers we did before, and the auras are going to stay in their position because we didn't give them any other information. It's just going to track uh, the values. I'm, I'm going to do a, a tutorial on tracking in a, in a later series here, or in a later tutorial, because it's a little bit more complex if you don't know what tracking is. So here we go. We have queue number one and queue number two. Let's just, for the fun of it, uh, record another queue. Let's say all our auras again. Let's just change them to blue, and we once again store it in our master queue list, and now it automatically just created queue number three. The next time we're going to store a queue in this queue list, it's going to be queue number four. But as you can see, we are already running out of room here. So a cool little feature you can do in uh, the Granny May 3 uh, software is you can go in here and you can find the font size and you can right click and set the font size to 10, for instance. And when we go back, the font size is a lot smaller so we can see a lot more of the queue list. And we can even rescale some of this to uh, to remove some of the things we don't really need right now. This brings some of this stuff like uh, duration and queue time, fade time, a little bit closer to, uh, to us so we can better work with it. We build our view, we play with our queues. Let's just store this view so we have it next time. We go down and we press store and we store it up here in this uh, view pool up here and we say sequence and that way we can access it next time. We still have our, our first view as we built in the one of the first episodes. And now we have our sequence view here when we need to work with our queue lists. Working with queues is can be pretty simple, but you can start combining one queue list with another queue list. You can have moving lights like we have now, which are turned on in, say, magenta, like the Vipers are now. And then you can have another queue list who bumps out the color if you want to do like a festival gig or something like that. So we need to assign it to our faders. We need to have our go buttons. We need to have our flash buttons. We need to to uh, assign this room up here and, and to, to use the turn knobs and all that stuff. If you want to know more about that, you have to uh, check out the next episode in this uh, tutorial series on Granime 3 programming. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any comments or anything you want to say to me, uh, please leave a comment down below in the comment section and i definitely hope to see you next time if you get any value out of these videos please consider subscribing to the channel so you uh, get a notification next time we upload a video or maybe you could check out uh, some of our other videos they are linked right here on the screen right now i hope to see you next time on uh, the channel and uh, thank you very much bye bye